So, we're ready to start talking about how action potentials work, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what starts an action potential in the brain? Um, well, some sort of stimulus. Good. So, so, if it's in the middle of the brain, what would that be? Uh, it's other neurons talking. Good, and telling you to fire. Yeah. And if it's out in the periphery? Um, so, like sensory neurons? Right. So, so they need some sort of change in pressure or sound or light to fire. A form of energy which mm -hmm. has to be turned into a change in potential. And that's called transduction. That's called transduction and that's how sensory neurons create what are called generator potentials that can induce action potentials. Okay, so the first step is that the voltage of the membrane is changed in some way. Right. So that's membrane voltage and which, if you're going to excite the neuron, if you think of the inner leaflet, what's going to be happening to the negative charges on the inside? Are there going to be fewer or more? Uh, fewer. Which means you are removing polarization or you are... Depolarizing. Depolarizing the membrane. Good. Now, if you had a passive membrane, that's what, that would be it. And you depolarize the membrane and then it would just sort of go back. And then it would either stay there or if you took the stuff away, it would dissipate. Mm -hmm. But if you have voltage-dependent channels that change the amount they gate by virtue of the change in voltage. That's changing the conductance. That's changing conductance. So let's talk about sodium voltage-gated channels and their conductance. And let's imagine that you depolarize the membrane. What do you think will happen to that conductance? Um, well, if it's voltage-gated, then maybe the conductance will go up? It will. There are other kinds, but that's the, the standard kind we're going to talk about first. And so that relationship is a positive one, so let's put a little plus there. Good. And so the conductance increases, that means there are more holes open in the membrane to let sodium do what? Which way is it going to flow? Um, well, sodium is low on the inside and high on the outside, Good. so it should flow into the cell. Excellent. And what does that do to the leaflet on the inner side, to the charges? That would bring positive charges in uh -huh. and thus depolarize the membrane. Good. So the first point is to say that the current due to sodium is increasing. So let's do that. And there's an arrow joining that. And it's positive. And now the last step you just went through is that that increased current is going to increase the voltage further. There's another plus. Oh my, what is a closed loop of positive influences called? That's positive feedback loop. Ah, positive feedback loops. So positive feedback loops are useful if you want to do what? Um, well, this is going to take a small change and make it a big change. Exactly. It usually amplifies the change and makes it happen very quickly. Okay. So what would be another example of something that has a positive feedback loop? Well, I think of my siblings and I fighting. If, if I accidentally hit my brother, then he's going to hit me back, then I'm going to hit him harder, then he's... Yes, but that <laughs> hopefully doesn't terminate with the two of you being taken to the hospital. No. Let's think of what's, a... What's another example? Yeah, let's think of another example. So how about um, a nuclear power plant? Okay. So you have uranium, and you hit it with a little bit of a, a neutron which breaks it apart, and it spits out additional new neutrons. And if there's a lot of uranium around, each of them will now break down and generate more neutrons, and you have a chain reaction. Now, if you don't regulate that, what do you, what do you get? An explosion. Exactly. So what you have is, going back to the action potential, an explosive, very rapid change in the potential that takes you close to, but not to, all the way to, the Nernst potential of sodium, which is plus 55. Instead, you get to about plus 30 millivolts. At that point, two things happen that break the positive feedback loop. Okay. So, that's where you're going. What happens first? Well, that so those sodium channels, it turns out, don't continue to increase in conductance. They actually shut. There's a decrease in conductance. Okay. Now, there's another set of voltage-gated channels that take a little while to respond. They let potassium flow, okay? and their conductance goes up after a delay. 
What is that going to do to the potassium? Where is potassium high? Um, potassium is high inside the cell. Which way does it go? Um, outside the cell. And it's taking positive charges away. So and it's that polarizes the membrane. So it hyperpolarizes. Hyperpolarizes the membrane, and the membrane. that basically breaks the cycle. And you end up right GK plus and G sodium minus C G sodium going down. Can I draw that over here? If you like. And that breaks the cycle. Good. Now, the last thing we should talk about is the following. In looking at the passive membrane, what we would do is we put a fixed amount of current in, mm -hmm. and we were controlling the current, and then we would measure the change in voltage. And that was called a current clamp, because what you're doing with that is you're controlling. The clamp means I'm controlling that thing, and I'm measuring the other thing, which in this case is voltage. I measure voltage. So control Control current. current and measure voltage. Now let's look at this problem. We have a positive feedback loop, and we want to break it, because we really want to understand how the current and the conductance change in time. Mm -hmm. The only way we can break it is if the currents don't feed back into the system. So if we, we could have, have a, to like break it off here. If we could break it there and we could set, we could control the membrane voltage, control the voltage, so and measure, measure the current, the current, we would have something that would allow us to break it. And that from the same logic would be called this voltage. Is a voltage map. That's a voltage map. So we're going to say a little bit more about that, but that's how you can break the loop and study the action potential. So for this, you're holding this. Mm -hmm. And measuring currents, and measuring which you're not allowing to flow into the membrane and change the membrane voltage. Okay. Cool. cool.